Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to RPG Basics Part 27. This is another Game Maker tutorial, and I'm really excited to bring this one to you. Today, we're going to learn how to put projectiles inside of our RPG game. And so we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, also, I want to mention there's a link in the description or in this video to my website. You can sign up for a free Game Maker course there if you want to go check that out. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new object. So come into Objects, click our little object right here. And we're going to name this Object Projectile. And it's actually going to be pretty similar to our damage object because it's going to do damage, right? So we're going to give it a create event and drag over a control action here. And we're going to say creator equals no one. It's going to need to have a creator just like the damage object because if we want our enemies to be able to create projectiles as well, if you want an enemy that shoots stuff at you, which might be a fun thing for us to do later on in this series. Uh, we want it to act like our damage object where any life form can use this projectile, uh, but the projectile won't damage whoever created it. And so we're going to program that into it. Now you're going to want to give it a uh, knockback value. Knockback, because we want our projectiles to have knockback too. So I'm going to give this one 10. And then we're going to want to do something uh, to make sure and try and prevent clipping with these projectiles because they may be moving very quickly. And what happens sometimes in video games is if you have an object that's moving too quickly, uh, it will actually... Uh, what Movement inside of a video game doesn't work like movement in real life, obviously. Uh, generally, things actually teleport to the next position, uh, but we usually use smaller increments and so it just looks and creates the illusion of movement, but it's actually just teleporting. Uh, there's So sometimes what happens is you have a wall, uh, but your bullet's moving so fast that its speed is fast enough that it actually misses the wall completely and never has a chance to collide with it because it teleports from one side of the wall to the other wall. So inside of the physics engine, there's a little property called um, physics bullet or uh, PHY bullet and if you set this to true it can help prevent clipping and you might even be able to do this on the player object I know some of you have been talking about how the player uh, clips that's because of the, I'm moving the X and Y physics position of the object instead of actually using a force and so that's part of the reason why the player object kind of clips sometimes. Uh, this might help with that. I haven't tested it but you could try that. So we're going to do that because we want to make sure that our bullet doesn't uh, go through walls and go through the enemy objects. We want to try and make it so that it hits them every time. Now this does require more processing power uh, to do this, which is why you don't want this set on every single object. Uh, you should only do this with some objects, but it is designed for projectiles. That's why it's called physics bullet equals true. So that's what we're going to use it for. Now let's click uses physics on our projectile and we're going to give it a density of 0.1, a restitution, a restitution of 0 0.0, collision group 0, linear dampening 0, angular dampening 0, and friction 0. So everything's going to be zero except our density is going to be 0.1. Now we will also want this to be a sensor object. Now what that means is uh, this object will not actually have a physical click, uh, a physical collision. It will be able to detect overlap between two objects. So we'll know whether or not it's um like on top of something or touching something, but it actually won't have a collision with it, meaning it won't try and it won't stop when it comes to it or meets it or try and push it or anything like that. It doesn't do anything that would happen with a normal collision. It can just detect overlap. So now that we've got that set as a sensor, and I'm pretty sure our damage object is the same. Yeah, we set it as a sensor as well. Uh, we're going to add a collision with the wall. So add event, 
collision and actually yeah yeah let's just do a collision with the wall okay so we've got a collision with the wall and we're just going to destroy it so instance destroy now we're going to add another collision and this one is going to be with the life form parent and inside of here we're going to uh, damage the other object and calculate knockback so we're going to say if other.id is not equal to creator so if the object we're colliding with is not the object that created us then we're going to say other.hp minus equals one and we're going to apply the knockback apply the knockback now we can actually go to our other damage object, go into the collision with the life form parent, and we can uh, copy the knockback right here, like that, and paste it in here. Now. There are things. There are a few things that are going to be different. We're actually going to calculate the direction uh, of the knockback a little differently. So we're going to say uh, var dir equals point direction zero zero physics x uh, sp physics speed x um, physics speed y. So that's just PHY speed X and PHY speed Y. Now what this does is it just gets the direction that we're currently moving, that this projectile is currently moving. And that will allow us to apply that direction to the, as the knockback for the other instance. Now you're probably going to want to, because the player has its own stats and not, its, not an HP, uh, well, it does have its own HP variable there, even though we moved everything into the player stats. That's kind of silly. We've still got old code in here. <laughs> so let's just take out the HP. Well, whatever. We'll leave it in. Uh, it doesn't matter, though, because the real stats are right here in the object player stats. Anyways. If you want the enemies to be able to hit the player with projectiles, you're going to need to add a special collision event that's um, basically just like this one, except it collides with the object player and subtracts from the object player stats.hp. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I am probably going to add some more enemies in that have projectiles later on in the series, and that's when I'll show you guys how to do that. But for right now, I'm not going to worry about coding that. So. Now that we've got the, uh, the knockback handled, uh, we want to make sure that when it collides with an enemy that we destroy it. But we, I don't want to destroy it immediately because I want it to be able to hit more than one enemy if there's two enemies there. So I'm actually going to set an alarm and say alarm 0 equals 1. And at the end of this alarm, we're going to destroy it. Alarm 0, instance, destroy. That way, it can hit more than just a single enemy. Okay, I think we've got everything we need for our projectile. Oh, it needs a sprite though, so I'm going to set it to sprite damage. And make sure you modify the collision shape so that it matches up. That looks pretty nice for now. Uh, this is just a filler sprite. It's not going to look super cool, but we'll work on that. I want to do I want to do some particles and show how to use particles in this series too. So. I've got loads of ideas now. I posted on Twitter and everybody sent me a bunch of ideas. Some of them I won't be able to do because they're just too complicated. This is supposed to be a beginner series even though it's kind of more intermediate now. But I, I want to still try and keep things simple for the most part. So now we just need to add an option to be able to create the projectile. So we're going to go into our helper scripts and script get input right here now we need to add maybe I'm just gonna call it spell key maybe spell key and we're gonna say keyboard check pressed ord and we've got let's see we've got C for dash X for attack 
and Z for pause. So maybe we'll do V for the spell key. And then we're going to want to do the same thing for the controller. So I'm just going to do face two. I don't know exactly which button that is. I don't have a controller plugged in right now, but spell key face two. And that should give us at least one of the buttons will work for spells. I don't know which one it is. You guys can change that to face two or face four, whichever works better for you. Okay, but now we're getting the spell key input. So come into the player states and come into the move state. And you can see the first thing we check for is the dash key and then the attack key. Let's do the spell key. Uh, let's do the spell key before the attack. No, let's do it after the attack key. Okay, so if object input dot spell key, we're going to create our projectile. So we're going to say var p for projectile equals instance create x, y object projectile. Then we're going to say var x force. We need to create an x force. We're just going to use length dir x 20. That's going to be basically how fast the projectile goes. And well, yeah, yeah, that is. And then face times 90. So that's going to get the direction that we're facing right there. Var y force equals length dir y. 20 face times 90. There we go. We've got our Y force and our X force. Now we can apply them. Well, we want to set the creator too. So P dot creator equals ID. And now we want to apply the force. So we're going to say with P physics apply impulse. And we're going to say X y x force y force and this will apply an impulse with a speed of 20 in the direction that we're facing so let's try that in our game now and make sure that this works okay so we've got dashing and you can see we do clip through the mailbox there or the sign not the mailbox uh, let's actually really quickly, let's just try setting physics uh, bullet to true on the player and see if that fixes the clipping. Bullet equals true. I bet it will. Okay. Oh, nope. <laughs> Still doesn't fix it, but that's, it's really because I'm setting X and Y instead of using an impulse or something. So if you want to change that, you can. Okay, so okay, so it looks like we can create projectiles. They get destroyed by the wall, so that's good. Let's see if they can hit enemies. And yeah, we can hit the enemies and damage them. So there you go. We've got a basic projectile. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to apply uh, particles to this projectile to make it look more like it's actually cool instead of like a big black circle and it's totally oh it's totally imbalanced and overpowered but that's okay <laughs> so there you go thank you guys so much for watching this video i really appreciate your support i want to continue to make videos like in the last video i said i felt a little uninspired but i'm kind of getting back in the flow of things i've got some exciting news coming so stay tuned be sure and like, favorite, and subscribe. Share this video on Twitter or Facebook or Tumblr or all the social media places that I can't think of. And I will talk to you guys later.